gonna sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord a brand new song. Sing for the wonders He has done. With holiness, His mighty arm has ever for Him victory won. The Lord has made salvation known to every nation, every throne. In kindness he remembered me with faithfulness for all to see. Shout, shout with joy unto the Lord. All the earth lift up your voice with the trumpet and the horn. Shout joyfully. Let the waters roar with mighty waves, let the rivers and the mountains praise, for a righteous Lord has come to save, and take back the power of the grave, and take back the power of the grave, shout the joy unto the Lord, and all the earth lift up. Hello, friends, and welcome to another week of Church at Home with the Salvation Army Guelph Citadel. I'm Peter Van Dynen, and I serve as one of the pastors here at Guelph Citadel, and I want to welcome you to our online worship service today. If this is your first time with us or you'd like to learn more about Guelph Citadel, I encourage you to fill out an online Connect card, and someone from our team will personally reach out to you this week. If you have a prayer request for yourself or a member of your family, you can email us directly at prayer at guelphsa.ca. We'd love to pray for you and serve you in this way. Now, would you join me as we read together our call to worship, a congregational prayer. Lord, fill our hearts with reverence for you. Make us hunger for your word and passionately desire to walk in your ways. Forgive us our sins, for they are many. Give us a greater glimpse of your glory as we offer you this praise and worship. We thank you for the way you have rescued us over and over through many difficult things. Come now and help us in this, to place our trust, hope, and confidence in you. May your name be honored in our conduct May your kingdom be made visible in our relationships. May your will be done in our hearts and minds. This we pray in the name above all names, Jesus Christ, to whom belongs all glory forever and ever. 
Amen. of the Bible, the lost sheep. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. Jesus taught everyone about God's love. All kinds of people would come to hear Jesus speak, including tax collectors and people who made bad choices. This made the Pharisees and Jewish leaders mad. Ugh, yuck. They didn't think that Jesus should be around these kind of people. Hmm. So Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Who stay here? Won't he leave the 99 others and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he's found it, hey, he will joyfully carry it home. When he gets home, he will call together his friends and neighbors, saying, Oh, everyone, come here, come here. Celebrate with me, because I have found my lost sheep. <laughs> in the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who returns to God than over 99 others who haven't strayed away.
of the Bible, the parable of the lost coin. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. Jesus taught everyone about God's love. All kinds of people would come to hear Jesus speak, including tax collectors and people who made bad choices. This made the Pharisees and Jewish leaders mad. Ah, yuck. They didn't think that Jesus should be around these kind of people. Hmm. So Jesus told them this story. Suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one, uh, uh -oh. won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, and one color. she will call in her friends and neighbors and say, celebrate with me and rejoice because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, the angels of God are joyful and rejoice when even one person stops sinning and follows God. Let's begin with a short prayer from 1 Timothy 1. May the words that are spoken and the reflections of our hearts be worthy of your grace, O God, to whom all honor and glory is given now and forever. Amen. Everyone has lost something at one time or another. Did you know that there's even a website now at www.lostandfound.com that acts as a global lost and found box? Users of the site can report items missing and can report items found. It's a good example of how technology can help people connect in a useful way. This is a gateway site for all the physical things that can be retrieved and returned to their rightful owners. According to their stats, about twice as many objects have been reported lost as have been reported found in the US. So the site's users are losing things at twice the rate they're finding them. Haven't we all had that experience of losing things that we know deep down we're never going to find? Depending on the situation, we can feel disappointed or heartbroken, hopeless, or simply discouraged by our own inability to find what is lost, or even simply to keep up with things on our to-do list. In chapter 15 of Luke's Gospel, we discover that we're not the only people who have ever lost something precious. In this passage of the Bible, Jesus tells three stories of people who might have appreciated having access to lostandfound.com. First comes the story of a shepherd who has lost a sheep. Then there's the widow who's lost a coin. And finally, the man who has lost a son. This morning, we'll only look at the loss of the sheep and the coin. But before we can enter into these stories, it's helpful to understand something of the context in which they're told. This gospel reading begins with these words. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were grumbling and saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus is once again hanging out with a crowd of people, possibly even eating a meal with them. But this is not the kind of crowd that the religious leaders approve of. This is a crowd that, according to the Pharisees, is lost, a crowd of tax collectors and sinners. If we imagined a crowd of people um, churches today would classify as the wrong people, um, who would that be? Would it be the rich and the wealthy who have no clue what the ordinary folk have to put up with? The power-hungry businessman willing to step on anybody's throat to get ahead? Is it drug addicts and prostitutes? Is it the LGBTQ plus community? Is it people who go to church but aren't really living for Jesus, the hypocrites? Who is the wrong crowd in today's world for you? 
It's important to know that to the Pharisees, tax collectors and sinners were part of the wrong crowd. So they complain about the way Jesus treats the wrong crowd as if they were his long lost friends. Why are you eating with, this, with these people, they say. But Jesus, who cares just as much about the religious folk and trying to lead them into a transformative moment as well, Jesus calls into question all they believe. Jesus will always reach out and love everyone, especially the most unloved. And so for the umpteenth time, Jesus tries to explain. And in this case, he begins with this story. God is like a shepherd with a hundred sheep who loses one, because sheep are always wandering off. Ninety-nine out of a hundred sound pretty good. Most shepherds wouldn't be upset, but God leaves the ninety-nine in the wilderness where they are vulnerable to wolves, wandering off and lots of other mischief to go out into the dark to find the poor lost one. God beats the bushes because no one is expendable. This good shepherd tramps out in the pastures, pushes through the briars, and listens for snakes while looking for the one lost sheep. And he finally hears the ba of the lost sheep. He lovingly puts it on his shoulders as if he is caring for a lost child. There is no chastising, there is no I told you so, there is no lecture of disappointment. One of the neighbors asks, why did you risk leaving 99 to go just to look for that one? And God replies, let's have a party. Jesus looks at the church people and asks, do you get it? And they don't. So Jesus tries again. God is like a woman who has lost a silver dollar. She still has nine left. Losing one isn't going to break her. And yet she acts as if it's all she had. She pulls up the carpet in her living room, moves all of the heavy appliances out of the kitchen and the furniture into the front yard. She searches relentlessly until she sees the shine of the coin that has rolled into the corner. And God runs out into the yard and calls to everybody, everybody up and down the street, let's have a party. Now do you get it, Jesus asks. You see, God's purpose is to drag everybody into the party, saints and sinners alike. Jesus eats with anybody because everybody is lost and needs to be found. Have you ever noticed that Jesus seldom called people sinners? What he called them instead was lost. Lost sounds more like concern than condemnation. Some days we feel more lost than found, more wrong than right. Perhaps we've acted like unthinking sheep and wandered off. Perhaps we felt as helpless as lost coins unable to resist the force of gravity. Perhaps we felt like everybody else knows something we've not figured out. Or like we've got something stuck in our teeth and we're the only ones who don't know. Or like we'll always fall a few points short on the are you good enough person test. So many things make us feel lost. The sudden loss of a job. Debts we wonder if we'll ever be able to repay. A child struggling in life the pain of a broken marriage, a long illness, an unrequited love, the loss of someone we love, wandering, wandering life with no clear purpose. We feel lost when, like the Apostle Paul, we realize that we do not do what we want to do. We feel lost when we get what we thought we wanted, and it's never enough. The worst feeling may be when we realize that we don't even know what we really want. We feel lost when we lose our patience, our sense of humor, our integrity, or our sense of purpose. We feel frustrated, weary, and vaguely troubled. We feel lost even when we're at home with the people who love us most. We wander off and can't think of any reason anybody should come looking for us. The shepherd is walking through the thickets in the middle of a stormy night. The woman is looking for the needle in the haystack diligently sweeping the dust out of the way, shining a light in the dark corners. God keeps seeking our company, trying to show us the good life. God looks for us through caring people, sacred stories, prayer and worship. God is a hope that pursues us unrelentlessly, a comfort that gathers us home and a love that embraces us. We are never as indifferent to God as we might think, for the lost feeling is also the longing for grace. When we accept the truth that God accepts us, the parts of us that embarrass us don't usually vanish, but they are changed into the light of grace. 
We don't suddenly lose our short tempers, vanity, sharp tongues, and talents for self-promotion and self-delusion. But we are found by a goodness that helps us accept all that we are. We learn to rely on God more than we rely on ourselves. God knows that we have problems letting go of everything of which we need to let go, of doing all that we think we should do, and of becoming all that we think we should be. What we most need is to do nothing at all. What we most need is to let ourselves be loved, to let God punch our ticket for given and join the party. For the one gift that matters ultimately is God's grace. God cares passionately that we be well and that we find our way home. God keeps searching for everyone who is lost, lost sheep, lost coins, lost insurance agents, lost teachers, lost mothers and fathers, lost daughters and sons, lost people like us. We are here because we know it is to be lost. We know what it's like to be lost and we know what it can be like to be found. Our story is of wandering off, yet being sought, being wounded, but healed, confused, yet cared for, broken-hearted, yet loved, foolish, yet forgiven, lost, yet found. These past four weeks of sermons might be the most rudimentary teachings of the Christian faith. We hear them, and if you have been in a church community for any length of time, you may say to yourself, yeah, 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 I know all this. This isn't new. And yet, as rudimentary as these teachings are, they are probably the most difficult to move from our head down to our hearts and fully live them out. How is your relationship with yourself? Do you actually love you like God loves you? Are you kind and gracious with yourself when you make mistakes? When someone disagrees with you or complains about you or treats you badly, does your self-worth take a hit? Do we love others enough to leave and go and find them? When I think about this sermon, I can't help but think about our new initiative about going into our neighborhoods on the fourth Sunday of each month instead of gathering in this building. Are we do willing to do whatever it takes to go and find the lost? And as you think and process these words this morning, may you not forget, forget God's answer. Let's have a party. Let's pray. Loving God, remind us that we are here because you invite us, seek us, come to us, and embrace us. We are here because as a shepherd seeks a lost sheep, you seek us when we're lost. As a woman searches for a lost coin, you rejoice when we are found. May the truth you offer us today stay with us when we leave this place. May all that is lost in our lives be found through your spirit. May the brokenness of this world be healed and turn to love and hope and may we strive to be your faithful disciples as the body of Christ. Amen.
Thank you, Leanne, for that wonderful word today and the reminder that in our lostness and in our wandering, God cares so deeply and so passionately that he never stops seeking. And thank you for joining in worship with us online today. Now, as we go, may Almighty God make you faithful to his calling, cheerful in his service, and fruitful in his kingdom. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon you, and may that blessing flow through you like a mighty river to all of those to whom he will send you this afternoon, this evening, and the rest of this week. Amen. Spin.